Should you rent or should you own? There's always been a debate on that topic. There's a couple of new reports out that are really highlighting the growing difference between the two choices. We're gonna cover that off today. Also from the nice if you can get it file, if you're wondering why Shopify CEO Toby Lutka looks so pleased in this photo, stick around for our second story today. He has about 200 million reasons to smile. Reddit is set to go public on Wednesday, but will a new FTC probe throw a monkey wrench into those plans? and YouTube introduces new efforts to combat fake videos. Today is Monday, March 18th, 2024. Let's get started with today's top stories. To rent or to own, there is an ageless question that actually is far more complicated than it appears at first glance. But there was some light that was shed on the question by a new RBC study that was released on Thursday. And economist Carrie Freestone, she casts a stark light on the widening wealth gap between renters and homeowners and reveals increasing financial hurdles that are faced by Canadian renters. The report underscores a troubling trend. As homeowners net worth has grown from nine to 13 times disposable household income since 2010, renters have seen net wealth growing only from three to three and a half times of their income. And this disparity now highlights a longer term trend where homeownership has been the principal driver of wealth accumulation. For a lot of renters, this idea of ever owning a home is becoming more and more of just a distant pipe dream. And this group is finding themselves with a, in a in tightening squeeze and they're allocating a growing share of their income uh, to housing costs. That number rose from 25% of take home pay in 1999 to 29% of their pay back in 2022. So that's a pretty significant um, increase there. If you compare that with homeowners, that group spent 21% of their income on housing over the same period. The discrepancy is made even worse by the seemingly ever increasing rent prices, which jumped 10.5% year over year in February. And that then leaves renters with even less capacity to save for a down payment for an eventual house of their own. The report says that the third quarter of 2023 was the turning point when both homeowners and renters saw declines in net wealth, but renters have undoubtedly been hit the hardest. Now, in 2023, renters spent nearly 9% more than their disposable household income, whereas homeowners managed to save 7% of theirs. Now this report, it aligns pretty closely with a TD study that came out last October, and it pointed out again this growing wealth gap between homeowners and non-homeowner baby boomers in this case, and it shows that there is uh, that this disparity is likely just to worsen for the younger generations due to the current affordability crisis. The TD report, it says the current generation of young Canadians is likely to not just repeat, but accentuate the narrative of wealth inequality against housing lines with affordability now at its worst level in decades. Shopify has made some headlines when it awarded its CEO, Toby Lutka, a compensation package valued at nearly $200 million in February. This package is one of the largest ever in Canadian history. It consists of 2.6 million options and close to 470,000 restricted shares. And it's sparked a bit of a, you know, some mixed reaction from the public. Some see it as a strategic move to motivate Lutke to boost the company's stock price. Others question the, the timing um, and the size of the package itself. Now, from a broader perspective, this move uh, by Shopify, it could be seen as a reflection of the company's efforts to stay competitive in the global tech landscape, especially when you compare it against U.S. tech giants. It's also notable that Lutka, he has a symbolic you know, $1 annual salary, no cash bonus plan, and he has seen consistent um, increase in options grants over the years, which just sort of emphasizes his crucial role and commitment to the company. Now, this compensation package, while certainly, I would say, eye-catching in value, it does underscore the board's confidence in Lutka's leadership and Shopify's long-term growth potential. The company shares have seen a lot of volatility over the past few years, a bit of a wild ride. We saw a sharp increase from 2019 through to late 2021, then a drop of over 80%, and now a recovery of about 180% since those lows in October of 2022. Now, as someone who spent my career analyzing investment opportunities, to me, this is just the perfect example of how you need to consider the implications of such a substantial compensation package um, and on shareholder value and then of course factor in corporate governance as well. And in this case, the um, significant increase in his pay package, in his compensation, particularly in the form of stock options and restricted shares in this case, um, it 
I would say it probably goes a long way to align his interests with those of the shareholders and it incentivizes him to drive up the company's a stock price. It also though brings into light the importance of setting a clear performance metrics, ensuring that executive compensation is tied to the company's long-term success and sustainability, not just, you know, what have you done for me lately? And I acknowledge that the package does seem quite excessive to some people. It does reflect a common trend uh, in tech where these high rewards are offered to executives who are seen as a pivotal, uh, few, as pivotal to the company's future growth and innovation. I would like to thank our good friends and sponsor of today's video over at Addy, which is a company that is absolutely changing the game for real estate investing. Until now, investing has been an asset for the rich, requiring big down payments, the headache of possibly managing crappy tenants. Well, Addy is here to change that as the largest real estate crowdfunding platform in Canada. You can now own fractional shares of real estate projects right in your own home city for as little as $1. Yes, $1. On their extremely modern and easy to use app, you can view the projects that are available for investment, get exposure to the real estate game with a dollar amount that you feel comfortable with. Fair warning here though, when these new projects drop, they sell out quickly and rightly so as Addy has provided uh, investors with capital appreciation and distributions that were not possible until now. Um, Addy is available in all Canadian provinces, territories. You can use our code BEVIS50 to get 50% off your Addy One membership. Visit their website at addyinvest.ca or click the link in the description of this video. Be sure to use the code BEVIS50. Also, Blossom, which is Canada's coolest social media app for investors by far, they've crossed over the 100,000 user threshold and it continues to grow every single day. If you've ever wondered what your favorite YouTubers invest in, head over to Blossom and have a look. You can see what the members own, follow their trades, and see what to say about why they make the portfolio moves that they do. If you're interested in taking a peek at my portfolio, my username is Mark B, so that's M-A-R-C-B. You'll find me on the app. Um, seriously, Blossom has been a huge help to new investors. It's free to join. If you haven't already done so, have a look. I'm sure you're gonna like what you see. Reddit is set to go public in just a couple of days now on this Wednesday, but it's now disclosed an investigation by the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC, into its AI content licensing practices. This inquiry, it centers on Reddit's plans to license user-generated content for AI model training, which their, their company's pr uh, touting as a novel concept. Despite the scrutiny, um, Reddit maintains its compliance with U.S. consumer protection laws and anticipates cooperating with the FTC's requests for information and documents. And this information was made as an amendment to Reddit's IPO filing. So the question, I guess, is will this affect um, the investor's appetite for the stock? Well, leading up to the news, Reddit was reporting that there is an oversubscription between four and five times. So this obviously suggests a very strong interest. Uh, it also puts the potential valuation of the IPO at $6.5 billion that positions Reddit to achieve its targeted price range of $31 to $34 per share at its IPO in New York. Now, obviously, an oversubscription doesn't guarantee a strong market debut, but it does show clearly this investor enthusiasm for the platform. Now, to further engage its users base, Reddit has allocated 8% of the IPO shares to its platform users, moderators, and select others. Now, a few years ago, we all became acutely aware of Reddit's influential user base. Most notably, you'll all recall Reddit's meme stock saga that you know came back when it goes back to 2021. It was orchestrated by the users on the Wall Street Bets forum, which highlighted its user-driven influence. Reddit now today has an average of 73.1 million daily active users, and this IPO represents a pivotal moment for the platform. It's navigating through the regulatory scrutiny that we see now at the same time trying to capitalize on that strong investor interest. As of today, YouTube is introducing a new feature that requires creators to mark their videos if they contain artificial intelligence, AI generated content, especially it says if that uh, content appears very realistic. So this move is aimed at ensuring transparency, preventing viewer confusion with synthetic content that closely mimics reality. Creators will find a checklist now during the upload process to disclose if their content depicts fabricated actions by real people, um, altered footage of real locations or events, or entirely fictional scenes that are made to look real. And this, is, uh, this step is part of a broader initiative by YouTube to address what are growing concerns over the misuse of generative AI technology. And this of course has become increasingly sophisticated, more accessible to the average person. And it makes it really challenging to differentiate between authentic and AI generated content. 
The requirement for disclosure here, it comes amidst these rising worries about the potential for AI-generated content to mislead users, especially in mind, keeping in mind the upcoming 2024 elections in the U.S. and elsewhere around the world. YouTube's policy mandates creators now to identify videos that contain realistic uh, AI manipulated content so that they can label them. Uh, a label can be added for the viewers to help them understand what they're seeing that's been created or uh, altered or entirely created through digital means. And YouTube says that creators who don't comply with this risk, uh, with this uh, rule, they risk facing penalties, including the removal of their content, or in the worst case, uh, in the worst case scenario, suspension from YouTube's partner program, which of course then could affect their ability to earn money from their videos. Now, interestingly, YouTube's own AI-generated tools, which they introduced last September, they're also going to be subject to this clear labeling. However, not all AI-generated content needs to be disclosed under the new guidelines. Um, content that is clearly fictional or uses AI for non-deceptive purposes, like creating animations or enhancing video quality does not require uh, this new labeling. YouTube says that this distinction is crucial in maintaining a balance between fostering creativity and ensuring uh, viewer trust. Now, broadly speaking, this uh, change just underscores the importance of transparency and accountability in the digital age. But in the space that we're in here, the financial space, I think it's even got a higher level of importance there in the financial industry, obviously trust, clarity, those are very important aspects or characteristics and, and YouTube's approach here kind of mirrors the need for clear disclosure to prevent misinformation. Obviously investors, we rely on accurate data to make our informed decisions. Viewers also depend on transparent content to differentiate reality from fabrication. So this initiative by YouTube, I think it's a step forward in acknowledging that uh, responsibility content creators and platforms have in safeguarding the integrity of the information that we all share online. Don't forget to uh, subscribe for our Pulse newsletter that goes out every weekend. Also, if you haven't visited our Investing Academy website, you can do that by clicking on the link below. I'll put a link for both that and the uh, newsletter uh, in the description of this video. Again, thank you so much as always for watching. We'll see you on Wednesday.